You'll hear by that iconic laugh. Joining me now, one of my all-time favourite drag queens, Art Simone. Hello. Hello. I'm here. Now, you might find it hard to tell the difference between the two of us. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'll just drop my tone a little bit lower. Hello. <laughs> Both of us taking our performance cues from Cafe Day Night. Well, it's just it's what you got to do, you know. I find myself slipping into her on stage. Yes. Literally halfway through a stand-up, I'm just myself. I'm not even in character. Yeah. And all of a sudden I'll spot someone in the yeah. audience. Well, you right, <laughs> I'll put your ankles away, you slut. My what? favourite is, like, I'll be interviewing someone, I'll be talking to them, and they start, like, parroting me. And so then we just, like, try and, cath- like, one cath up each other and we're just like, well, anybody here, I'm going over here. Blah, 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 blah. And then no one knows what's going on. It's terrible. No, it's amazing. It's so camp. It's so good. I'm so glad to have you here. I can't believe it's taken us this long. I know. Well, I think it's good, you know. You know, we've got to wait for a good thing and this is going to be a good thing because um, if you, you waited long enough that my NDA has run out, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, sorry, I was, sorry, no, I was emailed directly by World of Wonder and they said, just letting you know, the NDA is for life. Oh, no. That's fine. Ah, oh, who cares? Fine. Who's listening to Emsolation, no, whatever. It's fine. We are talking about uh, RuPaul's Drag Race Down Under <gasps> and I couldn't bring myself to watch it for a long time. Even though you were on mm-hmm. and someone that I love and adore and have known for a long time, because I honestly feel like it didn't represent Australian drag as I know it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How did you honestly? <laughs> <laughs> let it out. Let it out. Come on. But, I mean, what people don't realise is you were having to watch it while we were all on lockdown, right? <laughs> so you could do nothing and you were the Ricky Lee of Australian drag. You oh. were voted out far too early. Yeah, it was a lot going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were in and out of lockdowns. Mm-hmm. Um, but... We knew when we st- stepped on the set that it wasn't going to go down really well. What the fuck, man? Look, because I was the first one in there. I walked in, said my line. You walked into the portable classroom <laughs> <laughs> with the fucking cherub well, statues from yeah, Bunnings. And I said, is this it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Because I had been to DragCon before and one of the, well, been many times, but one of the years they actually set the American workroom up at DragCon. Oh. So you could walk around, do photos and see what it was like. So I knew how big it was, how tall it was. High quality. How many, oh, it was amazing. Mm. Um, and then I walked into that and I was like... <laughs> <laughs> I was like, <laughs> fucking hell. So they, yeah, and they shoot it in New Zealand, which yeah. is the other thing. We're literally in a shed. You know, like like industrial Sorry. areas that have like the shed and then yeah. the little office. Mm. That was two of those next to each other. One was the it's main probably stage. Probably a meth lab too over oh, from you. Of course. <laughs> But they also shoot the block in there, the New Zealand block, and like you could, they're like, yeah, under this purple paint is the block floor, and then there's this, and then there's that. <laughs> you know, multi-purpose spaces. They were probably put um, doing crews to and from <laughs> as well. Wouldn't surprise me. But it was look, it, we walked in, and we just knew from that moment. But even the workroom being so small, I was in denial. You know, the first episode, I was like, maybe it's like that year on Big Brother where there was two houses <laughs> and then maybe this wall is going to be knocked down and there's the rest of the workroom. They're testing us. I reckon they're testing us. It never came. No. Dylan. <laughs> and just the standard between New Zealand drag and Australian drag. Yeah. I'm sorry. I mean, with all due respect, which <laughs> isn't much, our um, level is so much higher. Yeah. The polish. When you have an you entire... Wear penny Hosts. You, go, <laughs> you you talk. I just feel like I was watching going, oh, no, don't throw us in with those Kiwis. Uh, oh, look, I think there's a, we had to make a lot of compromises because it was like the two um, countries together and I don't think we'll ever get an accurate representation of Australian drag or New Zealand drag. Mm. We're having us both together. We're not the same. No. We're not similar at all. Um, so it's it's weird that we are together. It's like putting, I don't know, like Japan and Germany together. Like, why? Um, so, I don't, I don't know, you know. I don't know. Are you spiritually recovered from the trauma? I am, actually. That was far too fast, yeah. bitch. No, I, I am, no, actually. No, no, I am. Because I was thinking about this the other day because um, what I did post, post post show, post lockdown, all of that, um, we put together a show, et cetera, et cetera, and I, um, as seen on TV. Mm-hmm. And we addressed a lot in yes, that. Yes, I know. I and, watched, yes. Um, and one of the final numbers we do is um, we do a quote track where it's like all the things we said in the show, but we play each other. <laughs> so um, every night I had to watch her scream, that means nothing, and uh, cry, and this and that. And now it's just funny. <laughs> 
<laughs> now I don't cry myself to no, sleep. No, I love it. I'm like, God, you what a camp bitch. <laughs> oh, I'm glad because I was worried for you because I know you're a perfectionist. I know mm. how talented you are. And I could feel that you would have been watching it, especially during lockdown, and then having to deal with the fandom. Oh. The root, if you are not across the drag oh race, my fair, Jesus, goodness. you think NASCAR people, you think the no terror, the redneck Bogan race car fans are more behaved yeah. than the drag race fandom. Yep. They're just rancid cunts. <laughs> I'm sorry. They are rancid cunts. They're rancid That's cunts. That's what the not title of the episode is tonight. Rancid everybody. cunts rancid with cunts. keyboards. <laughs> rancid cunts with keyboards. Oh my God. That's what they are. They're. they're Awful people, and they like everybody say love. Meanwhile, you should die because you sent the one that I love home. You're a piece of shit. Go kill yourself. And oh. you're like, oh, okay. Well, you weren't in the room, babe. So. Oh my god, and it's just drag. It's just drag. It's just drag. We, we say that to me though. But <laughs> <laughs> just drag. This is my life. This is my life. This it's fine, Em. Fuck you. Um, but yeah, no, I, I'm feeling a lot better about it now because, like, even when it finished, I was like, oh, I would never do. I'm never not going back. I remember, um, really, the finale night where we. We were open, the borders were open for like a week. So we're in Sydney for the finale viewing and we're in like a penthouse at the Ivy. Um, and we watched it all happen. Then it happened and I just had the biggest release. I was just like, it's over, it's mm. over. Because to backtrack, when we're in lockdown, we, we didn't get to see any of the love. All we got was like the negative, negative, hate, 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 hate. Because the whole world was stuck watching it. Mm. Um, but it wasn't until we started like going out later on that people were like, oh no, I loved it. Because they're the ones that like, they're not always going to comment. They're not always going to send you love. It's no. Angry people. But um, I remember going back to the hotel after we watched the episode. I like was, I brought my like three closest friends. They were sitting in the hotel, uh, like on the beds. I was in the bathroom like scream crying, oh, had the longest shower of my life. And then I came up and scream cried more. And I was like, never let me do anything like that again. I was, I, you know, I don't want to say I'm thankful for this, but like Drag Race taught me to like have emotions again. You know what I mean? <laughs> like I hadn't cried in years until I got in that set. Oh, and then I cried for a good like two years afterwards. And now I feel good. Oh, <laughs> She was emotionally yes. constipated. She thank shouted you, Mama out. Thank oh, you. thank you, Mama Roo, for my trauma. <laughs> thank you so much for helping me grow as a person. I totally, completely, and utterly understand. Yeah. In every sense of the word. There's so many points in my career where I've mm. looked at my family and said, never. Yeah. <laughs> Let me ever do that again. Because <laughs> it was I, I was doing my singer around the same time. Everyone yes. was in lockdown. And I was thinking, I have to get an immigration lawyer to get home from Sydney yeah. to Melbourne. Well, that's when we were, filming, crazy. when we were filming Drag Race, the bubble closed. Yeah. And I got stuck in New Zealand for an extra, like, three weeks <gasps> after we finished filming. So I'd been there for, like, six, seven weeks already. And um, we, would, we we couldn't tell anyone where we were. We weren't allowed to leave the hotel because, like, they might see you. I'm like, I think they know by now. <laughs> <laughs> I think the world has worked out who is on this season of Drag Race. But no. We had to stay locked up and they and they got to the point where they were like, all right, we can't afford like to give you a hotel anymore. So you either have to go home and like pay for quarantine and do quarantine oh. or like you have to make the call really soon. And thank fuck, like the, the border opened for like two days, quickly got home straight to Mardi Gras. Oh. If we quarantined, we would have missed all of Mardi Gras. Oh so that's God. like all the bookings. And we hadn't worked for months before because lockdown and blah, 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 mm. blah, blah drama. No, it was crazy. Yeah. I remember being told, no, you can't get home to Melbourne. You yeah. can't get home to the children. No. So we had to literally employ immigration lawyers and went to court just so I could cross <laughs> the fucking border at Albury. Like, do you know how many times I've crossed that border yeah, in my like, car driving to yeah. gigs because I couldn't afford yeah. a fucking plane flight? No. And now I need top brass immigration lawyer that got Spell Corby home. <laughs> <laughs> It was wild. It was a wild time. And you're not making resin clocks now? No. Do you know I have a Chappelle Corby resin clock? Shut up. I had to get one. Can I tell you, my friend... And she friend... DM'd me and she's like, I just worked out that it's you. She'd like, and sent me a screenshot that she'd Googled my name and had a picture. <laughs> and she's like, I'm standing in line at the post office. If I knew, I would have written a message. <laughs> Meanwhile, open the resin clock and there's already a message on it. She must write them on all of them. Oh. And it's like got a page reference to a page in her book and she's like... I may try and clear my name one day, but in the meantime, I'm just happy. And it is the campus piece Fuck of me. Australiana. How? I, I, it, uh, Where did you see it? Where she sells them. She, li this is a thing. Oh, you don't know? No. Oh, Chappelle Corby. No, has merch. She sells no. handmade resin cloth. <laughs> <Shut up. laughs> what? What are you 
mean she had yeah, of all the things? Yeah, well, God, look at her on Instagram. She literally um, uh, makes resin clocks in it. She walks along the beach and picks some shells and she does these like ocean re- resin clocks. And it's, she crafts. Yes. She fucking it, ma- it's <laughs> heaven. You need one for here. How I'll much tell do you they what, cost? Like 200 bucks, 250 bucks. I mean, it's a bargain. Yeah, bloody hell. She pays for itself. I know. So <laughs> I've, she did like a limited edition black series. So, you know, because I'm a little goth, goth, goth boy, I was like, I'll take one of those. Thanks. That's the cat. And she's signed Order it. Order me a clock. Yeah. Go look at them now. See what's available <laughs> on the website. We'll pop it up here. Oh. But please support Chappelle Corby. Go on. Oh, God. <laughs> My friend Ruby's claim to fame is Chappelle Corby's dog, sister's dog, bit her on the vagina. <laughs> My friend Ruby. And she had to go to emergency oh. and Mercedes went to emergency <laughs> with her. Literally. They met on a night out. They were drunk in a taxi. Oh, the dog bit her on the shin and Ruby ended up in hospital to get a tetanus shot with, with Mercedes beside her. Then she ended up playing Mercedes and Chappelle called me the musical. <laughs> How's that for a story? <laughs> Fucking love Ruby. And just added a resin clock to it. and you done. clock? Yeah. Oh, that's made my day. And every note, it comes with a note too. I can't tell you how much I want to leave this recording yeah. right now. <laughs> So this is a 10-year, like, quartz thing, but the, the hands are very fragile. They're very fragile. Do you think she learned to make clocks in prison? I don't know. It's I mean, an odd skill. She might have read a book. I don't know. It's just not something I'd attribute to her if I thought, what's your skill? No. What's your secret skill? But I, she just seems so chill Clock and happy making. now. I love it. I love it. Like, sure. everyone go and support Chappelle Corby's clock business. Sure. Oh, and she's she's a little anyone? single, you know. Oh, God. Oh, have you ever sunshine. done hair and drag? Uh, no. Well, after I saw Karen do it on the season, I was like, okay, we don't need to do that again. <laughs> <laughs> it's Karen from Finance. Yeah, it's watching her try to explain. I'll be pressing the shade button that I have here right now. <laughs> watching her explain to Rue who Chappelle Corby was, was the wildest thing I've ever seen in my life. I mean, he didn't even know who Bindi Irwin was, so like, no, no luck at all. But, um, he's like, What? And she's like, yeah, she went to prison. With a, she had a boogie board of marijuana, so I've got a big spliff. And Ruth's just like, <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> and why would Rue lower herself to learn any Australian culture whatsoever? <laughs> oh, imagine that. Isn't she married to an Australian, though? Yeah, well, apparently. Oh, well, they've got an open relationship. Yeah, open relationship. I guess they live in different parts of the country slash world. Of sometimes. the world, yeah. One's on the fracking ranch. In then, Wyoming? Yeah. Doing the fracking? Yeah, they, well, we've seen her house oh, now. Oh, AD. Heaven. I watched it. Yeah. Incredible. I mean, I don't think she lives there ever, but... <laughs> That drag room, I was like, that is not a drag room. It's a mausoleum. Yeah, the, it's the, amazing. The makeup room, there's not a, one item of makeup in it. When has that person done their own makeup? <laughs> I was like, was well, so it? When did you bring your own house? Like, <laughs> but heaven. She's heaven. got it because she can have it. It's everything I want. I love it I so much. I feel like she just sits there. I know. I, I, I just can't imagine. I just think for like Rue would just go back into her coffin and sleep upside down. Rue, um, we liken Rue to an animatronic at Disneyland. Yes. Because she, when she's on, she's on. But then when the cameras are not rolling, she conserves that energy. She just, like, literally just goes. <gasps> I need to learn amazing. that. Amazing. I need to fucking learn that. It's amazing. Oh, she my God, yeah. She's one of the most professional mm. and talented TV stars I've ever worked with in my life. And mm. it was amazing to see in person. She's a fucking machine. What like, did you learn from watching her? I'm intrigued. Well, um... <laughs> Tell me that you can say. <laughs> no, I, no, I think it, it, that's the main thing. It's like she, her work ethic and her professionalism is amazing. Sure, she doesn't sit down and go, and how are you, darling? I'm so grateful to be here. No, too busy, love. Not much talking yeah, going on off camera? Not at all, not right. at all. Um, just every now and then, like... Um, if you cry about a childhood trauma, she might step towards you. Oh, maybe, maybe. Yeah. It was more like if she'd say a celebrity that was going to be Zoom, you know, on the Zoom screen because it was COVID mm. and we didn't know who they were, so she'd be like... Ten inch cock, and we're like, yay! <laughs> That's the only way she could get us to like seem like we were excited. Mm. Um, so little moments like that we um, appreciate. But she was just so professional and like quick and smart, and mm. you know she's got her earpiece in, but she's still listening to you and having a conversation, looking like she's like in it, but still like delivering. It mm. is. That's an art form in itself. Have you ever done anything where they're, like, feeding you lines? Yeah. Oh, my God, it's cool. Oh, no, I struggle. On yeah. the project especially. It's, oh, my God. <laughs> I take it out. Yeah, I've done it once um, when I did, like, an episode on The Bachelor and I was, like, doing one-on-ones with the girls and they're weeping and crying and the producer's, like, telling me the next question to ask and I'm like... <laughs> like, trying... My eyes twitching while I'm like... Like, they better cut around this, for fuck's sake. Oh, God, I love um, you but I felt like a spy. I felt like a spy. Yeah, you do. Yeah, I was like... Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you really, I learned how to tell line producers to fuck off with just my eyes yeah. too when they're in my room and I want them to shut up. <laughs> yeah, that's really, it's a skill you acquire in television, I have oh, to tell you. It's camp. Yes. Um, so I really like that, yeah, really cool. And um, it, was, it was, there's so many funny moments because like it was filmed in a shed. So like there were moments when the plane, we're under a flight path. So, um, oh, and that's just, right. And it's just a tin shed roof. So like Rue would be like, hold for planes. I mean, everything would just stop for a second. And that's when we would power down and be like. Just the idea I, of her being out there, though. Oh, it's, it's so oh, weird. Her being in a shed in oh, New no. Zealand. And Michelle as well. And so I remember she walked on because we've every, we only had the two. And the rooms. lighting. Well, the lighting in the workroom, amazing. Because everyone yeah. looked a lot better on screen in the workroom than they did in person. Myself included. <laughs> um, but the runway lighting cooked. I'm like phobic. weird green, like... Oh, my God. Oh, I don't know what It's not great. No, But no. look, you know, also let Ensel look at you. Just They're grateful. There, killing. We love it. Thank you. <laughs> no, I what... love World of Wonder. Yes. I love you so much. Yes. Um, if you so feel like I. calling, let me know. I it's love all right. you too. I'm ready to just, you know, like, you know, be good. You can't do stuff. any more work, you fucking gig pig. <laughs> Gig.pig.com. Oh, You've got to keep be- busy. You're so... D- you're, are you addicted to busy? Yes. Like, are you afraid to be alone with your thoughts on what might happen? Yes, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was obvious. <laughs> Same. I spot a sister in arms. Like, I, um, I broke my foot uh, at World Pride, kept working. Um, uh, but no, I didn't know it was broken. I, everyone's like, yeah, it's just sprained, it's sprained, because they like I had a lot of work at World Pride. <laughs> so I just kept going for like oh, se- right. 17 days. Oh, your stories. Oh, my God. I was invested. Yeah, it was like a purple foot. Anyway, oh. um, and then I finally like got back. And a few weeks later, they worked out it was broken, blah, blah, blah. So then I had to stop working for, like, a month just to, like, give myself okay? time. Pardon? Were you okay? Mentally or physically? Mentally. Oh, mentally, absolutely not. Oh, my it was, God. I, my poor manager, I was like, what are we doing? I can do a Zoom. It's fine. Let's do a Zoom. Let's and do you something. feel like your career is over when you Li- do a forced dress, literally. right? Literally. I ring my, when I'm doing forced dress, I'm like, oh, I'm done. I'm literally. irrelevant. Literally. And you watch other people doing gigs on Instagram, yeah. and you're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> That's why I was like, anything Zoom, it's fine. I can do it. It's fine. We'll do it like, like I'll do a bingo. I don't care. Oh, it's no, fine. I can't. It takes me back to lockdown. Yeah, oh. No more Zoom performances. I absolutely cannot do but that. In that moment, I was like, let's bring it on. Let's go. All right. <laughs> He's like, why don't you have a break? I'm like, no. <laughs> but to what end? What do you want to do? What's the, what, all of this furious work? And you do, mm-hmm. like, we'll talk about the podcast. You're gigging. You're driving down to Geelong still. Like, mm-hmm. you're doing so much work. You were the hardest working drag queen, and that is a big call because Bianca Del Rio, De, Bianca Del Rio hasn't had a night off since she did no. All Stars. No, she didn't do All Stars. What she win? Season six? Uh, yes. 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 Not that I have an encyclopedic knowledge of all contestants. And, <laughs> no, I can't. I feel we'll talk about that. I feel weird talking about my love of drag race too much because so many straight white women do it, and I feel a bit yucky. But we'll talk about that later. Um, so, to what end? What is the goal? Um, the goal for me is I really want to move into, like, more into mainstream Aussie media. I've done stuff overseas, but my people are back home. Mm. I bloody love it here. Mm. And, they're you know, that's that's the people I like to entertain and um, speak to. So, I really want to move into more mainstream media, you know. It could be my own little show. It could be just, like, you know, I want to be a guest judge. On, well, not a guest. I want to be a judge on a panel. You know, I love judging people. <laughs> so do I. You yeah, know, it would be quite fun. <laughs> but I think there's, like, so many fun places within Aussie media that I could slot into mm. and no one would bat an eyelid. Mm. It's a bit harder at the moment because everyone hates drag queens because we're trying to, you know, groom children apparently. Groom away. Take I all know. of my children oh, and please bring I, them back to me as the you. I don't want to read to kids. But that's what, that's what, that was my whole point. We should be protecting drag queens from yes, children. Absolutely. From children. Literally. You should see those sticky little dickheads. Oh. I have one. He's four. What? He's disgusting. Yeah, no. Nah. And you beautiful creature should not be subjected yeah. to the stuff. Nah. Elio just talks about shit and actually you shit and penises. Is, well, it's not foreign well, it's topics bit, for you all. Yeah, but, it's about the same. Yeah, but. <laughs> but I was it was always wild to me. It was like, wait, wait, who's you worried about the kids? Yeah. Why? Yeah, no. And it's not like you're getting up and doing your one AM set from Molly's. You know, no. like it's not like you're sitting down there. It, it's weird. It's okay for me to jump yeah. on a giant dick at the Opera House stage. No, that's an eyelid. It's fine. It's just diversion tactics. It's all just, and it, or at, especially at home, we're just parroting stuff they see yeah. overseas and like, oh yeah, we should be, we should feel strongly about this. And like, why? What? You didn't care about it for the last like million years. Forever. Yeah. Have you personally had any like blowback from being a drag queen? Considering yeah. what's been going on. So. The only, like, uh, area we've had it back in is we do a festival called the a Dragged Out Festival in Beechworth, mm-hmm. which is a regional drag festival. We did our first year last year, um, and we're back this year in November. Um, and 
we do like a family friendly matinee fun drag show. Mm-hmm. And we had like picketers, we had people like doing Vox Pops that then got turned into this weird, like angry video of being like, look at these groomers who are all encouraging this, blah, 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 blah. It's like. Encouraging what? Fun, glitter, yeah, and campery? Literally. We edited so many funny fart noises into our like, matinee <laughs> drag show and the kids were oh, screaming. It's only, I'm telling yes. you, oh, oh. fart and poo jokes, but get like, them in. The, what made it even funnier is um, Filma did the edit and Miss Filma Box and she didn't tell any of us. <laughs> <laughs> so it was even more fun for her watching us because we were like, I will survive. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Oh, camp. it's it's all camp yeah, yeah. and lovely. I saw my dad. I saw the lay girls. It was the first my dad yes. took me. I think because he was on the way home from a gig, and we stopped in at St Kilda. I was with him, and so my first experience with drags when I was very young. It was really normalised in my household, and I've kind of grown up. And I'm, I'm always really shocked when I get pulled out into the real world where people have mm, an issue with it. And I was yeah. like, but why? It's so strange, isn't it? It. I don't know. I, and I hope. I hope it starts to. Do you feel like it's? Do you worry that it's going to get to the point in Australia where it is in the states? Are you genuinely worried? I know you don't like to get political. I know you're a people pleaser. I know you don't want to get anyone not to like you. Yeah, look, I know we. You cannot not be worried because we've seen so many events being shut down. Yeah. From uh. You yeah, know, the, my local library in Eltham. Yeah. They had to shut it down. Yeah. Because Dean Dean Akiri, what's Dean's drag name? Uh, Frock Hudson. Frock Hudson. Frock was due to read a, a book. And, and, out in Eltham, I was just personally, I feel like I need to apologise to the entire drag community on behalf of my municipality. Yeah, it is, it it is, and it's starting to affect not only, you know, like drag queen jobs as well, mm. but it's also affecting like all the kids and rainbow families that, yeah. you know, really enjoy those moments. Mm. Um, and it's scary for them. It's like, sure, you put the event on, but then the kids have to deal with like angry picketers with masks on out the front. Like, mm. it's just not right, but... I don't know. I I don't think it's going to get as bad as as it is over there. Mm. Um, but you know, I'm waiting for the next thing for them to focus on. Can we go? Go on. Leave next. us alone. Leave us be. Leave us alone. Or I'm doing a cleansing harp. <laughs> <laughs> I have a cleansing harp. So before we move on to your amazing podcast, which I've listened to, I'm going to ask you a question that I feel defines everybody. Okay. <laughs> Who is your all time favorite? Drag Race contestant, and I'm gonna I'm gonna give you season seven and under because it's too controversial mm-hmm. for you to do anyone past mm-hmm. that. Like, and also after season seven, mm-hmm. I stopped memorizing the queens for some reason. Yeah, no, it. I feel like the first it's when seven... the machine really started to amp up. Yeah, and yeah. it was like, oh my god, and they all because I think there's, you know, as an individual as we all are, mm. there's only. X amount yeah. type of drag queen. So by season uh, seven onwards, mm. you're like, oh, you're similar to this person. Mm-hmm. Which, you know, I hate when people do that to us being like, oh, you're just like that. But if we're being realistic, mm. it's like, every, it's all kind of the same. You know, mm. you're either a camp queen or a comedy, comedy queen, queen or a fashion queen. Mm. Or blah, 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 blah. Mm. Um, okay. So. Take your time. Take your can time. Can I have a couple? Yes. Okay. So it was always. I always want to guess. It, oh. No, no. No, guess. Raven. Yeah. <laughs> Same. It was, I feel like we're gonna have the same favorite. Yeah, it was always Raven. Raven. I loved oh, her. I flawless. loved her. And then, like down from that, it was Manila because Manila oh, was just so. You've got a Manila wig on today. Yeah, just so camp. Mm-hmm. And I loved her. Like, did you see I, she's in trouble for her padum padum? They're in trouble. Why is she in trouble? Because people are saying it's vulgar and disgusting. Well, of course it is. I know. She's a drag queen. Correct. <laughs> and you think Kylie's upset? She's selling lube. No. Come on. <laughs> She's selling flavoured lube. It's amazing. It's so good. I know. I mean, yes. I, was, I did listen to that. I was like, but then I was like, camp. Camp. Go for yes. it. Yes. Bloody go for it. Yes. Um, yeah, Manila, because I, I loved a lot of her really clever fashion um, references, mm-hmm. you know, because, you know, and it was very Priscilla-y drag to me, which mm. I, I, of course, love. So those two. Mm. And then, like, also, you know, a little bit Sharon, but we don't talk about Sharon anymore. Oh. Know. Sharon's been ousted. So. Oh. Oh, no. Poor Sharon yeah, Needles. Poor oh. Shares. Close your mouth. Oh. Oh. Stop talking. Yeah, Who do you think my top three are? I'll let you guess. Raven, yes, but there's another three that you could, I wonder if you could guess. Um, Bianca? No. Nah. Oh, okay. Oh, God. Oh, um, mm. Mm. I'll put some music on. <laughs> some thinking music. I'm definitely not going to get this. Um, um, 
dive in. Um, uh, we can go. Camp. Camp. Southern. Camp in Southern. Oh, I don't want to go. girl. Oh, no. You Come can, on. You can try and You can get them. there. All I want. Back no. rolls. Oh, Alyssa. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Alyssa, for me. Yeah, she's heaven. Besides Raven. She um, messages me on Instagram Stop every it. now and then. And it's just like, she'll like a picture and then like re- send it to me and then send another love heart and be like, love and light. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. And then she messaged me one day and she's like, who does your phone wigs? So then I gave her filmer's details oh. and now she's wearing some of filmer's wigs. Oh. But it's like. She just randomly would go, love and light. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, okay. I need love and light from all the yeah. Edwards. I'll pay for that. That's a cameo service. I can just get a text message every now and then just says love and light for Alyssa Edwards. It's heaven. I don't know. She's my fa- I just think because yeah. she's a proper traditional showgirl. But she's also on another planet. The sh- totally. <laughs> like, the show must go on. Yeah. And I watch her disassociate every now and then and I really I really get that. And I, like, I'll watch her and she'll just be like, do you know they used to have this trick when they'd bring her out to Australia because she'd kind of, like, relax a bit and people <laughs> want to see her, like, do yeah. full Alyssa. So every time they'd book her, they'd put a dancing queen before her and she'd watch them and go... And then go out and go, like... So clever. Yeah, and she'd, like, amp up her show 20-fold. <laughs> because other times she'd come and she'd just... Which everyone loved regardless. She'd just, like, talk in a microphone for half an hour and she'd be like, thank you! And I was like... What? This is spins. <laughs> Spin, twirl, twirl, twirl. But, um, yeah, yeah, it's a little trick they used to have. To oh, get I to love like, that. Yeah. She's one of my faves. And I also love detox for the fashion, for the oh, looks. Oh, yes. Detox for me and totally transformed yeah. the body with plastic surgery for oh. the art. De- so I toured with detox last year. Oh, I love year. this. You can just say I toured with yeah, just such yeah, a great place. Yeah, she's flex. coming back Go. to tour. Um, we have a Halloween tour this year in Australia and she's going to be on that with me as oh, well. Oh, my God, amazing. Um, and she, I mean, I've known her for years. She mm. was one that always had t- a time of day for me mm. before I was um, ever on Drag Race. Yeah. Um, she was always so wonderful and so nice. And if she was ever in Melbourne, she'd like make, her, like make sure to come and say hi and blah, blah, blah. But touring with her, she is... Mother hen. Oh. She is so lovely and so caring. Yeah. I love that. She's so nice. She's just walking around in her silk pyjamas all the time. Doesn't matter where. Like, we're just at the airport and she's just in her silk pyjamas with a pair of glasses on. She's like, what? Oh, (laughs) heaven. Heaven Heaven and Alaska. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're my faves. Yeah. We Uh, we picked some good ones. Yeah, they're my absolute all-time faves. I I think, honestly, like, post those early seasons, we haven't seen any queens, not many, be able to, like, retain that, like stardom, you know? Mm-mm. And it's weird because even more people are watching Drag Race now than ever before and not as many people watched back then, but they're still, like, the big names. It's crazy. No, I agree. I don't know. For me, all because also all of the TikTok queens have started coming through. Yes. Like those those twins, yeah, 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 which yeah, were, yeah. I found, insufferable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the pony. <laughs> truck, truck, truck. I just, yeah. yeah th- I found them insufferable. But, I don't, yeah, I agree. And also this season of All Stars, I'm finding... I'm finding it hard to watch. Well, the scary thing with the new seasons of Drag Race is they've used up all the drag queens. No, when are you going to do an All-Stars? Well, when they ask me. Will you do it? Yeah, I would, yeah. Your redemption? I definitely would do an All-Stars because I've already experienced the absolute worst. (laughs) 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 That's true because I've already lost. So, like, what are you going to do? Send me home again? Okay, at least I've got a promo picture this time. No, but you're polished enough. Like, like, I would be happy to send either you, Karen, or Hannah. mm -hmm. They're the only three that I've seen on Drag Race. That for me are polished and camp enough. Everything yeah. is in its place. Yeah. Um, yeah, because it's even like with Canada, uh, we, they sent over Anita. Um, so we still didn't get any Aussie. We haven't had any no. Aussie representation yet. So. Oh, Brooklyn. I've got a soft spot for Brooklyn in and out of drag, yeah, I have to say. Lovely. Woo! She's the same. So the one year at DragCon, before I was on Drag Race, it was DragCon New York 2000 and I'm going to say 18. Gosh. Probably 19. Um, and... Uh, Rue would always do a ribbon cutting. Yes. And um, I was there and Brooklyn grabbed me and put me right next to them oh. and held me there. She's like, they're not going to move me because it was just like after her season had aired. Yes. And put me like next to her and uh, Nina West and held me there. So then all these pictures was like me and RuPaul. And I got to like go home and be like, hey, it's me and RuPaul before anything had ever happened. Amazing. And that was because of Brooklyn. Because ah! She's like, she's like, nope, you go there. Because she had like, we'd had conversations back and forth for years before, like she was even on the show. So. Oh my God. I love hearing queens she's, like that behind oh, the scenes. so nice. Who's an absolute cunt? Uh, me. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't have to tell me. Don't no. ruin it. And if they want to be, they can be. They're a drag queen. Exactly. Cleansing harp. <laughs> 
your podcast, yes. which I love. You can steal with me, Art Simone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but what I love is, and I'm talking to you when we we're off air, the most recent one was with a forensic cleaner. Mm. And you really just went into game show host. Yeah, got it. Most deaths, but just saying the most awful, god awful things. Yeah, you, you got to listen to one where I actually got it right because <laughs> I never get it right. So explain the premise. Yeah, so concealed. Um, the premise is that I get put into a room with a stranger, everyday Australian. And you're in full drag. In full drag. Mm-hmm. Um, get put into a room with a stranger, everyday Australian. You know, just look like. Oh, your intro fucking yeah, sent me. Just... You know, most people are just boring. Yes. <laughs> Most people, there's not much about them. They're not very special. They look shit. But sometimes they look shit and they're not. Exactly. <laughs> so I get put in a room with someone I've never met before in my life. The producers grab them and uh, and they put them in and I get to ask them three questions. And from the answers to those three questions, I have to des- uh, determine what it is they're concealing from me. Mm. And it can be, you know, a hidden talent, a job, a skill set, something that's happened to them, mm. uh, anything wild. Um, and I, you know, answer... They answer the three questions and then I try and guess it. That episode I did. You got it straight away. I know, but sometimes I don't at all. Um, but that's because sometimes it links up that it's someone that I have a weird, like, morbid fascination with. <laughs> and that was one where I was like, oh, I've watched so many videos about yes. these crime zone cleanings. Um, but the whole idea is we then, you know, get to chat to them and um, they get to tell us what it is that makes them special and we interview them. But the whole idea is, you know... I forget that my life is crazy mm. and weird because mm. and it's not till I step out that I go, oh, it's a bit strange. Mm-hmm. There must be other people out there like me. Mm-hmm. So we bring them into this space and these are people that might get, you know, negative criticisms about who they are or what they do as a job. But, you know, one of our early ones in the first season was um, a taxidermist and oh. she, she'd gotten so much hate because they're like, you know, you're killing and butchering things and all this stuff, but we bring them into this inclusive space where we get to celebrate them for their differences. Mm. Um, and I think that's something I can relate to as a drag artist is being like, okay, people think I'm a bit weird sometimes and don't like what I do. You take the other and yes. bring them in. Yeah, so, mm. and then we get to celebrate them for it. And there's been some real fun, wacky things, you know. We had like a um, a competitive eater on the first season. <laughs> so she ate like six cupcakes and 30 oh, seconds Oh, I in front saw of me. that. The chuck, yeah. she was a tiny little oh, thing. Little, she, little. Was, she was put, and you had a knife and fork and she was just shoving it oh, in. Oh my God. Was and was cool. it milk she was drinking? Yeah. Yes. Is that is that a technique? Yeah, apparently. <laughs> what I does it know. do? No, dampen the, the gag reflex? I don't know. And the weird thing that she said to me, I was like, oh, my God, so you mustn't eat before, you know. She's like, no, you have to eat to stretch your stomach out. So bef- so she increases the size of all her meals before she does, like, an eating competition. See, there's all the hard facts you need to know. Mate. Right? Interesting. No, <laughs> every episode, and you ask really great questions. I, re- I noticed that. Because sometimes, you know, you listen to these things and uh, the, the set and forget questions. But every time I thought, yeah, but what about what does blood and piss smell like as a combo? <laughs> you then ask that question. That's fabulous. Yeah, it's great. you got it's a real great. sense for her. You're a little truffle pig Yay. with that disgusting information. I just... Yeah, I could tell. You were smelling it. You were loving it. That's, it's so, and so you're in second season now? Yes. And what else? Uh, give me what else, what's, what's been your other favourite one besides the death cleaner? Um, oh, well, the first episode was the puppeteer and voice actress who was Mixie in The Ferals. <gasps> the Ferals? Yes, The Ferals. Oh, my and, Lord. And I got Ferals tattoos. And um, I, I didn't know that, like, they'd already, like, I didn't know she was going to be there. And because I don't know what she looks like because mm. she's a bloody puppet, mm. isn't she? Mm-hmm. Um, and that was heaven. And then she got, you know, like, Medigliana to, like, join the call and say hello to me. And I was squirming. But then <laughs> she also revealed that, like, she worked on Bananas in Pajamas and, like, played the magpie and the tortoise and this. And then she was, like, the Dolmio commercials with, um, you know, the Dolmio green, you know, the puppets. Yes. She was, like, the Dolmio girl. And ah. she's had so many, like, iconic Australian, like, uh, pop That's culture things. I would love to be a voice actor. Oh. I'd be f- just everyone would sound like Kath, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then she was, like, because she puppeteers as well and she was saying how. Oh, she does the actual. She was the, yeah. She puppet- does a hand up the butt. Yes. Yes. Um, and she's now a remedial massage therapist. I was going to say sense. she'd have strong forearms. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Um, but she's also, like, done puppeteering for other people's voices. Like, so she did, like, an ad for um, something in the States, but Christopher Walken was the voice of, like, a squirrel or something, and she oh. played the puppet. I love Damn. that. Oh. oh, so good. So where are we hearing this podcast? Everywhere? Everywhere. Everywhere. Oh. You know, just search Concealed Without Simone. It'll be there. We'll put all the links everywhere. Go. Tap, 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 You'll get a bunch of that. You'll get a bunch of middle-aged straight women coming at you. Hello. Um, on that topic, actually, good segue. Um, I want to have a proper conversation about the drag community's attitude toward women like me. Oh, okay. What is it? 
Well, we love you. Well, no, not me specifically. No, I know. I'm beloved. We love, <laughs> we love the well-behaved ones. We think you're cool. You come to our shows, you support us. Right. But if we're going to... Good, bring, go to this, speak bring, to this. If we're going to bring it back to um, what we were talking about earlier... Like, this demographic has been coming and supporting us and seeing our shows for so long, but they're all the ones that are silent at the moment when we need their help. It's like, not me. No, not you, but it's like... <laughs> it's true. It's, it's a large portion of them. It's all fun to bring your girls to the brunch and be mm. like, oh, camp, be like, oh, drag queen, Instagram mm. photo. But they're all the people that are very quiet at the moment mm. when all this negative stuff is happening towards the drag and trans community. It's like... You can't have one without the other, babe, mm, mm. because if all these gigs stop, you can't come to brunch anymore, doll. I agree. So, I like, agree. That's I think that's the only thought in our heads at the moment. Yeah. It's like we need our allies. Yeah. You know? You'll be happy to know a large group of emsolators were very vocal with the Eltham Library oh, Rock good. Hudson situation. Good. A lot of them drove a couple hours to go and attend. Good. Um, so we do have, I mean, there is, we are a drag, I do have attracted drag lovers and bought mm-hmm. drag to that community, but I always feel a bit self-conscious talking about, you know, I often see in the press women, oh, I love drag race, I love, yeah. I'm a drag race super fan. Yeah. Often, and I just feel I a bit. I watch RuPaul's. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, RuPaul's. Yeah, oh, RuPaul's, yeah, yeah. Can you do a <laughs> It's drop. <laughs> my God. Yeah, yes, queen, yes. Because I like, did bloody hens parties for oh. 10 years. My present to myself after Drag Race was no more hens parties. I said, I've done this. I, never, I would ban them if I, I, I owned a drag bar. I never want to stand nah. in a room no, with, with, hens. A, with hens ever again. <laughs> I think I'd rather a bus If I've done your hens party, it was a great time. But <laughs> um, I've just left that behind me. Um, yes. Because, yeah, we'd be standing there and be like, we watch RuPaul. This was before I was on the show, right? And we didn't even have it. You know, like, we love Drag Race. I'm like, cool. All right. Yep. Beautiful. Anyway. Um, and they're like, can you do a death drop? Why do you do a death drop? Do a death drop. <laughs> and I'm like, can't go make your Play-Doh, Play-Doh penis and shut the fuck up. All right. <laughs> Come on. Your plaster of Paris yes. penis. Come on, we're going to make a toilet paper wedding dress and you're oh, going to love it. God. Right. Oh, God. Go on. That, that's good. Well, that, that, that's, I mean, that's a fair call. I agree. <laughs> I the think... Play-Doh penis. Or the... <laughs> yeah, the Play-Doh penis, but also show up pictures. Yes, show up. I appreciate that. Yeah. And I think my community will hear that especially. But mm. I genuinely have loved drag from the moment I was exposed to it as a five-year-old. But I do, I don't, I give about 10% of my love and fandom within my Instagram. Yes. And publicly because I do feel self-conscious about it because I don't want the drag community to not like me. <laughs> what do you but how, where, do you know where what is I mean? this coming from though? Like why do you think they wouldn't like it? Because I read so much criticism of no, women like are, me. Not oh, really? me. Yeah. Like, oh. like I'm part of I a Facebook like group. Little, I don't like the little teenagers on the Twitter. Yeah. Oh, it sounds so old. <laughs> <laughs> you are. <laughs> Oh, I don't like the little teenagers on the Twitter. On them ticky tockies. <laughs> um, no, but it's like the rancid little like teens that are like 13, 14 that are like, nah, cancel her, you're going to die back. You're like, shut up. Oh, um, well, we did have the like most the controversial seasons of all time. Oh my that was extraordinary. There were gollywog tatties. One thing after another. Nazi, there was try, cultural appropriation. Really, being Scarlet- in the room, love. Oh, babe, Scarlet. Try being in the fucking room. <laughs> Watching this go down, there's like a shot of me and etc. looking at each other on the main stage being like, what the fuck is happening? If you're not across it, <laughs> one drag queen in particular who I've worked with before, mm. she is a, a WA-based queen and didn't leave a culture unappropriated. <laughs> <laughs> Left no culture unturned. She got them all. <laughs> Look, she was uh, equal opportunist in her racism. That's true. <laughs> didn't leave anyone no, out. Like, so inclusive. Oh, she made sure to document every single one. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> she's so talented, though. I know. I have to say, it's hard separating it when you're like, yeah. I mean, the casual racism, terrible, but Fuck, she can sew. Yeah, and yeah. it was. I found myself being like, no, no, but oh, can I just see what she would have worn for that week, please? But yeah, no. And then we had the tattoos of a friend of ours. Yes. But it's yeah, it was just wild that the first two seasons, <laughs> Martin controversy before it even began. You, I mean, well, oh no, off that. Anyway, tell me, no, I, I, I can't, I can't hear. <laughs> <laughs> This is, off, this is a yes. off microphone put a discussion. Later on, okay. Oh, I will. I'll put a pin in that. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you very much. Oh. <laughs> We're done. I think I feel like I've had you long enough. I've had you 40 minutes. Fucking hell. Oh, sorry. No, no, don't apologise. <laughs> I could go for another two hours. Um, is there anything else? You've got a large audience at your disposal yes. right now. What do you want well, to say? Well, if you like Drag Race, um, we do a show called Kick-Ons as well, which is up on YouTube. We'll be linking. Um, All the links will be coming. Yes, yeah, so uh, where we recap Drag Race I Down Under. But we're currently releasing, we did a whole bunch of episodes uh, live from Drag X 
Expo Sydney. Yes. Um, so we're slowly tripping those out until it's time for season three. Then we back up and doing the full episodes again. I'll have to come on kick on. Oh, you'll have to. I'll, I demand it. Your set's a lot nicer than mine. <laughs> you, can, you can film kick ons here if you oh, want. Oh, perfect. All right. We'll do a special edition. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, go and check out Kick-Ons. It's, it's really, really fun. Um, and the other thing that I love about it is it's shining a spotlight on other drag artists, you mm-hmm. know, that are outside of the world of drag race. Mm-hmm. Um, if you go back and watch season one that I did, um, it's same with the, uh, Wow Present sh- show. I had Highway to Heal, which I spotlighted drag artists that I love. Mm-hmm. Um, it's what I always like to do is shine my spotlight on others as well to be like, check Good. out these. They're pretty shine cool. On your, shine on yourself first. Yeah. And well, then you've had they, your moment, shine it out. It's a big spotlight. It's not, so <laughs> they can stand over behind the shoulder <laughs> and just get they a bit of it. support me. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, they get a torch. They get a torch. But it's still the thought that counts. Oh, turn my phone light on. Yeah. They can see. <laughs> Fuck them. they got to fight for it. they got to fight for it. <laughs> Art Simone, you're a fucking delight. Everyone needs to listen to the podcast. Yes. Concealed. Yes. Check out Kick-Ons. Kick-Ons. And just really Come go, to shows. go to your shows. Come to Melbourne Drag Expo. Where, where is that? Uh, it is in August. What date? Um, that's a very good question. I'm away. I think it's I'm like going to see Madonna in New York. Of course you are. Madison Square Garden. Oh, what's your thoughts on the new song? I heard it in the car on the way Vulgar. here. Yeah, that one. Vulgar. Yeah. It's no padam padam. No. <laughs> it, oh, I just wanted it to be a bit happier. I just, and from like, especially one person who can really sing. Well. Oh, Sam. Sam. <laughs> yeah, I mean like, I, you, I thought Sam I might sing the chorus. Yeah, there was no singing. No. No. But also, I could imagine being cooked and dancing to that at like 5am in a nightclub. Yeah, it hit my kids different. Yeah. Who would do that. But they played it, what, at midday on a Monday while I was driving here. Yeah. Um, it was a bit like. Yeah. yeah. I was in the traffic and Something's I was like. Something's missing. No, I think is about, a yeah. Long intro or? Cooked. It's a 3 a.m. cooked. <laughs> yeah. Whereas Padam's start of the night. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I'm obsessed. Padam. Padam. I, I, have you got a, have you got a act to it yet? Are you oh, no, it? I couldn't possibly. Oh, you have to. No, you're camping. Every you're Australian. Drag queen is yeah, but doing... we want your version. Oh, I know, I know. But I listened to it like crazy when it first came out. And then I gave it a, a rest and I just started listening it's again like the last two days. And I'm like, <sighs> it's so it clever. Just, it's good, doesn't it? Because it ends before you're ready. Yeah. So you just, it just, you just play it again. Oh, it's on repeat. Yeah. Oh, it's already in, you know how, like, I mean, I'm a, a iTunes music person, but rude. Um, no, that's fine. I'm not with Spotify anymore. Oh, good. Uh, <laughs> I'm independent. <laughs> um, but uh, I've already got my top, like, songs of, like, 23, <laughs> and it's, like, second. <laughs> In June, and it's been out two weeks. Yeah. Love it. She's breaking it's it. It's already surpassed everything. No, I get hyperfixation songs, yeah. and I just I play them till they break. Yeah. And, yeah, I'm just, like, when I heard it, I was like, and it's all Elio wants to listen to, so the, the two of us just on the way to kinder, I was just, won't be playing Vulgar on the way to kinder, though. Oh, no, 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 no,